Yeah, I mean, I get uh, messages usually right after the show from people saying crazy things. You're not funny. You aren't interesting. Somebody told me, this isn't about your right to free speech. This is just that we don't believe you should belong. You don't belong in the society. So people, people are just people are triggered easily and they are bored and they want something to hate. And I'm an easy target. I'm standing in a park with a microphone talking about Trudeau, talking about Teresa Tam, making jokes about, um, you know, gender and race and all kinds of things like that. So things that, that easily they can go, that's bad and he's a racist and he's a bad person. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Toronto. And folks, before I get to my update on the story of comedy in the park. Um, if you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com. If you're able to, make a donation. Sometimes we need bodyguards, sometimes we need lawyers, and we depend on your donations so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story. Well, I'm with stand-up comedian Ben Bankus, and you may recall Ben from a report we did back in July he was entertaining people who were basically Torontonians going stir crazy d because of the Wuhan virus stipulations back when we were still in stage two. He was putting on free comedy shows at Christie Pitts. Well, of course, um, somebody had to call bylaw and um, Officer Coward, and no, I'm not making a joke about that, showed up and uh, gave the comedians the bums rush, not without uh, issuing a couple of grand in fines. Now, here's the thing, Ben and company moved south to Bickford Park. We attended one of the shows, hundreds were there, everybody was enjoying the show until last Friday night, folks. This time it wasn't bylaw that showed up, but you're never gonna believe this one. Ben, it was a group of, I don't know, woke, politically correct comedians that didn't appreciate your brand of humor. Well, we, I, I don't know who exactly called bylaw or the cops. We, last week we had bylaw officers. We had four bylaw officers and we had about 10 to 15 police, uniformed police officers at the show. Um, and uh, they were actually hiding in a bush um, at the top of the hill. And people were informing me that there was like a lot of cops up there. So I thought, better go talk to them before they come and talk to me. So I said, hey, are you guys here for the show? They're like, yeah. I was like, what's the deal? They're like, oh, we're going to serve you um, basically a summons to court if you do the show. Um, and I was like, well, are you going to shut down the show? And they were like, no, but we are going to give you a summons. And so I decided. So they're going to allow the show to go on, at least law enforcement was, but you're going to pay for it. Right. So um, we started the show. Bylaw came down. They took my info. And... Um, and then the cops stayed for most of the show. Many people noticed that they were enjoying the show. Some of them. <laughs> I don't think all of them, for sure. And uh, they came down at the towards the end of the show and said, you need to wrap this up right now um, because we keep getting complaints. They were saying they were getting noise complaints and complaints about the content of the show, what we were saying. Um, and so I said, okay, we'll, we'll shut it down. And then two minutes later he got a radio call that said um no you need to we're, we're gonna give you a trespassing now noise is one thing but content this is very subjective ben this was this almost sounds like the thought police saying that we don't appreciate the type or style of your humor or something can you uh, connect the dots here for me yeah, I mean, our theory and uh, many people's theory is really that it probably wasn't people in the neighborhood, considering many of them were donating and coming down with chairs and coming to me and saying, thank you so much for doing this for the neighborhood and in the park. We love it. Um, so it's very possible it was kind of woke comedians or, or people that just don't like me or what I'm doing um, calling and emailing. The cops told me that they were getting emails, inundated with emails, um, that, that there was, you know, people had their kid at home and he was hearing bad language, which is pretty much almost impossible, I think. Their, their argument is, hey, people are here enjoying the park and you shouldn't be able to just throw whatever you want at them but you know my side of it is hey we're doing this as a comedy show a protest for free speech 
we're going to say things. Most of the comics are professionals, so whatever we're saying is intended to be funny. It's not that we're just standing up here trying to piss people off, for sure, because we want them to stay anyway. And Ben, if there's any category of uh, professional that would stand up or, or would want to stand up for free speech, other than, of course, journalists, you'd think it'd be comedians. I mean, I'm a fan of the genre. I mean, the very best comedians not only push the envelope, they incinerate the envelope. I'm thinking of guys like Sam Kinison, um, Andrew Dice Clay, and these people have it upon themselves that they don't like the content so instead of saying change the channel or move on they want you shut down i mean this is like the embodiment to me of what we're seeing all over the world cancel culture yeah i mean i get uh messages usually right after the show from people saying crazy things you're not funny you aren't interesting somebody told me this isn't about your right to free speech this is just that we don't believe you should belong you don't belong in this society so people people are just people are triggered easily and they are bored and they want something to hate and i'm an easy target i'm standing in a park with a microphone talking about trudeau talking about teresa tam making jokes about um you know gender and race and all kinds of things like that so things that that easily they can go that's bad and he's a racist and he's a bad person but uh the fact remains um i know you got a show to put on in um, a few minutes now so i won't take up that much more of your time and look at the venue we're at it's queen's park now do you think you're going to be allowed to um have your show tonight or do you think you're going to be shut down by the queen's park security guards uh, I hope we're not shut down. I mean, it's possible that it's a little bit smaller than at Bickford Park because maybe some people won't make the trek, but I, I, I don't see why it would be shut down. I, I can see them giving me a warning. I can see them kind of coming over here and checking it out. If we did it again, maybe they're going to shut it down. But my hope is that we have a good show here, and I think we're going to continue to move the show from park to park uh, until, you know, for the next couple weeks, till it's too cold and then hopefully people aren't too scared and they can come inside and watch a real comedy show. Okay, well, let's see what happens. A word of advice, if you do get the heat uh, today, uh, Ben, um, just scribble BLM on your shirt and throw some paint at that statue. Believe me, they'll turn a blind eye. We'll see. Uh, I don't have any paint. Uh, I didn't come prepared, um, clearly. Definitely not any pink paint, but we'll see what happens. I mean... We're comedians, we're trying to make people laugh, we're trying to have a good time, um, we're trying to show everybody that, yeah, look, we can protest too, we don't have to be uh, violent or, um, you know, aggressive, we can do it with laughter and with words, and I think that that's much more powerful than, you know, just breaking shit. This is a comedy show, we've been doing it for 14 weeks, and uh, we were doing it at Bickford Park. You guys know Bickford? Yeah, big, 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 big dick, whatever. Um, we got kicked out after 11 weeks um, because, you know, we're just having too much fun. Okay, folks? Okay, so it's the day after, actually a few days after, and Ben, we couldn't stand around, stick around for the entire show. Uh, how did everything turn out? Turned out pretty well. We had about 300 people come out to our show at Queen's Park. Um, yeah, people were move. People came from Bickford Park. Uh, some of them thought the show was still going to be there, and uh, apparently there was some cops waiting at Bickford Park for me. I don't know. <laughs> How in the world could they justify shutting down a show where people are having a good time listening to comedians? Yeah, well, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we are protesting, and I do think that. Um, comedy is an essential service, just like, uh, you know, salads or whatever else is, is being allowed to be open right now. Uh, grocery stores, I think, it's, I think it's an essential service to laugh and to be able to look at things um, with a different perspective and, you know, bring, bring a sense of normalcy back to our, our city and to the people in it, the citizens and the fans of comedy. Well, I respectfully disagree with you on one point. Comedy is far more essential than salad. Um, but Ben, you know what? <laughs> Here's what I want to propose to you. Uh, I feel as you do. Um, I'm not into cancel culture. I'm not into the idea of people voluntarily gathering in a park to hear some comedians give them some much needed fodder to laugh about during these dark days of the pandemic. So 
we want to start a petition based on your experience. It's called LetUsLaugh.com. That's LetUsLaugh.com. I want people to go to this petition, sign their names, take a stand for comedy in the park because God knows everything from violent protests to homeless encampments are happening in the park. And when we get a significant number of signatures, we'll deliver this to bylaw ourselves. What do you think about that offer, Ben? I think that's a great offer. I appreciate you guys. And, uh, you know, you're pretty much the only <clears throat> uh, media that's sticking up for me, the cause, for comedy. Um, and I think that there's a lot more at stake than people realize. If we go back into lockdown, um, the Canadian comedy industry is going to be screwed, um, even more so than they already are. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, the days are getting shorter, the weather's getting chillier, uh, you have a certain window in which to do these performances, but we just think when it comes to bylaw officers, when it comes to um, politically correct, woke comedians embracing cancel culture, enough is enough. Like I said, folks, uh, if you support Ben and his uh, crew of comedians in spreading a little laugh to the city, Please go to letuslaugh.com, put your signature there, and like I said, we'll deliver it to the proper authorities once we get several thousand. And you know what, Ben? I'm sure we will get several thousand signatures. What about that? I'm fairly confident about it, and, and I think something that people should remember is there are different genres of comedy. So if you don't like my genre of comedy or somebody else's, you can always find another one. Um, you don't have to attack people for being different than you. It's it's very similar to uh, or you know the idea of if punk rockers didn't like classical music and they started calling the police on classical music artists who are playing because they didn't agree with that type of music. So. This has got to stop, um, and it probably won't, and at the end of the day, it's good publicity, so keep on hating. Indeed, Ben, I couldn't have said it better. Uh, you don't like what you're hearing? Change the channel. Don't confiscate the person's radio. Yeah, exactly. These people, uh, we're living in a day and age in 2020 when we have more channels, more Netflix, more options to watch things, and more uh, events to go to than ever before, so I think that they just need to take their butts somewhere else and sit in a different chair and witness a different event. Well, folks, bringing you the other side of the story does not come cheap. Sometimes we need security in order to bring you the other side of the story because there are forces afoot that don't want us to bring you the other side of the story. If you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com. That's journalistdefensefund.com and make a donation.